and welcome to Quilt Moxie, the podcast where Quilt Moxie meets Craftsy.com, an online community dedicated to providing the best education and resources for crafters. Join me, Ariana, your host, and come along on my video journey where I participate in the Craftsy online classes and community. Meet up with us online at quiltmoxie.com or at your favorite hangout, Craftsy, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter. Check the credits at the end of the show for more. You can also subscribe to our mailing list to get your next and every episode with show notes delivered directly to your email as soon as the episode is available. It's as simple as dropping your email address and checking receive podcast by email. Welcome. Hello. Welcome back to Quilt Moxie the podcast. I'm your host, Ariana. And this time we're continuing with our very scary knitting in this month of October for Halloween. Halloween knitting is the same for me as double knitting. I'm going to continue with the Craftsy Classes double knitting with Lucy Neatby and Alistair Post Quinn. And this time it gets very, very, very scary. And then I'm going to continue and show you where I left off with the Myra Wood class Crazy Lace Cardigan, which I have now combined with the Amy Herzog class Knit Flatter. I'm going to end this pod podcast going back to my roots, which is quilting. And I'm going to talk a little bit about where I'm at in the quilting world. So I hope you're ready for this. Buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Let's get started in the gallery. So today I thought it would be appropriate to take out one of my watercolors and behind me you're going to see Rapture, which is the name of this watercolor painting uh, that I think I did that about two years ago, maybe. I'm not sure exactly when, but what's what's so exciting about this watercolor painting uh, which I did expose and I think it did win something or other in a juried um, form. I don't really remember what what it was, but what's scary about this painting is that I put here, you can see the big sunflower and then there's a leaf and underneath the leaf you have, I painted in negative some praying mantis. Yes, there are two of them. And now you can sort of guess why I came up with the name of Rapture for the painting. In French, we call it Ravissement. Yeah, I think that's it. Ravissement or Rapture in English. So that's all I have to show you from in the gallery. Uh, the reason I'm bringing out my watercolors is I've noticed on Craftsy that there are some art classes coming. And I've already signed up for two of the free classes that I'm going to be trying out and hopefully in a future episode I will bring in some of these art craftsy classes that I'll be following. Hope you stay tuned for that as well. So let's get right to the scary part of um, the episode which is my double knitting. Last episode I had started with the Alistair Post Quinn class and the Lucy Neatby classes and um, I noticed that, and I think I mentioned this before, Lucy's class, she focuses a lot on the quality of the stitch, which I really appreciate. So I did continue with her class, and I did the, um, I should have prepared a bit better for the podcast. I don't remember what she calls the pattern, but I'm going to show it to you. It is... I hope my camera is picking this up. It is a cozy for my new iPad that I got. And uh, you might even recognize this wool. And the fact that it's felted. Now, anybody who has fo followed along with me in these podcasts knows that in my house, we know how to felt wool really well. So this entire cozy is made up of uh, Shetland wool, which felts easily in my washing machine. And what's cool about Lucy's class is that she shows you how to knit using double knitting these built in pockets, which are so cool. Uh, I'm going to show you a close up because this is what I did not really like about my knitting. You can see that where the double 
where the pocket joins the rest of the knitting, uh, my stitches are distorted. And she talks about that in the class and what you can do to prevent that. So here's the other side. The other side, I guess, is a bit better. I'm not sure why that might be. And of course, felting everything really helps the stitch quality. The other thing that I think is very cool is her handle. So this handle, uh, it was a lot of fun to knit. I did end up with two little holes on either side of the handles, which I just used, I just, you know, sewed them shut. And then once it's felted, uh, it all goes away in the wash, so to speak. So that was um, her cozy project. And then what was really cool about her class, and this might also be scary, this might be my first, but I'm not sure, it might not be, this is going to be probably the first second sock syndrome sock that I will have knit. I did this sock one at a time. And as uh, I mentioned on my socks episode, I like to knit them two at a time. And the reason is because I end up changing the pattern somehow. And I like my socks to be identical. So this one, if there is going to be another sock in the future is going to be I don't know how I'm going to do it yet oh well so let's talk about this sock what is so special about this sock by uh, Lucy Meatbee's class and remember the class is double knitting uh, first of all what is really cool are these little loops on the top of the cuff which is the same treatment like the handle but in miniature and again, I had um, posted a question on the Craftsy platform asking Lucy, uh, is there anything I can do about these little holes that are on either side of these sort of loops without having to pull out needle and thread and sew them shut? And um, no, I was doing it right. The holes are there. But I guess nobody's really looking that close except for once you start knitting and you get really addicted and you start looking at it with a microscope like I am. So you see holes. Otherwise, nobody can see them. See, from here, you see no holes except for the one in the middle. So I changed her pattern slightly. I changed it by putting my favorite cuff treatment on here because I thought it would look good. And the other thing that is cool about her sock pattern is that she uses a short row heel garter stitch style. And of course, I modified that because I like the hybrid short row with a gusset. I think I got that right. Or no, I like a short row heel with a heel flap to give it a bit more depth. And that's what I did. And the other modification that I did to it was I turned it into a, um, how would you say that? With a slip stitch. It's a slip stitch garter heel. So if you take the class with Lucy Neatby, you're going to see her do the garter heel. This one has a slip stitch with it. So similar to the slip stitch regular heel to give it more cushioning. This one, I added it to the garter. And now let's take a look. I'm going to hope that the camera can focus in on how nice the short row garter heel, even though it's a slip stitch, comes together. And I'm going to flip it around so you can see the other side. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, so I really like that. Uh, let's go to the toe because the toe, I did the same thing except now I did it reverse. So it is still a slip stitch, but the slip stitch now on the toe is on the outside. So it looks, it gives it more of a, well, you can actually see the slip stitch. Let's just say that. So it's still a slip stitch garter toe. And I, I really like the effect. So what's so, so special about these socks? I'm going to turn them inside out. Yes, look at that. So Lucy teaches us how to knit a double sole, and they are amazing. The, this is um, 
on the public side, as she calls it, you can see the stockinette. And on the other side of it, you will see the stockinette as well. So here is the bottom of the sock, and you can see it's a second layer. And here's the top where you can see the inside part of the stockinette that's on the outside. So this is very, very cool. It is definitely a, a warm sock and it adds, so it's twice as thick on the bottom as it is here on the top of the sock. So I'm going to turn it around again to show you how I slightly improved on where, so just like my, my bag, where the, the stitches are, um, the last stitch of the pocket, which is actually the double sole of the sock, was distorted here. How much I improved by doing the sock. So here's one side. I'm going to see if the camera can pick up. But you can see, hopefully, that there is an improvement in, uh, in where the, the, where does it, here, here it is. Whoops, where did, I actually don't even know where it is. I think it's here. So here it comes together. And yeah. So this is a very cool sock. Very warm. Perfect for Canada. And you'll notice that the colors, these are my dyed color, my microwave popcorn food dyed wool socks from Regia. So the both these colors used to be white and one I turned into hot pink and the other one into fluorescent green and I really like the combination. So I do recommend Lucy Neatby's class when you're starting off in double knitting. Um, I find the stitch quality that you get from that class is just beautiful and uh, she does give a lot of tips on how to improve the quality of your stitches when you're doing double knitted knitting because they can get distorted really easily. So yeah, really like that class. So then it got even more ugly because I went back to Alistair Post Quinn's class on double knitting. So I had done the first couple of projects and they were a lot of fun. And I was seeing a lot of success and the results were great. So I moved on to the hat and the hat. Oh my, oh, it was very painful. First of all, I'm going to show you all of the warts that I ended up with. I started the hat and this is where I stopped. So I just stopped doing it and I said, oh, I'm doing this definitely wrong because you can see the student projects on Craftsy. And you see Alistair Post Quinn's hat on Craftsy, and it's nothing like this. So I was already off to a bad start. I wasn't reading the chart correctly. Um, there was something really wrong. So I just stopped and I thought I'd show you. This is where I stopped and I just decided I was gonna start over. So then I started over. I do have a hat. So here's the hat. I hope you can see it. So that's one side and then let me show you the other side. So this is the reverse side of it. And when I did look online and I took information from the other students in this class, they, they would have preferred their hat longer. So I took their advice right off the bat and I did make a longer um, ribbing beginning. The other thing that happened quite by accident is I ended up doing this really cool sort of cast on because in my last um, episode I showed you how I do the Judy Becker magic cast on for my double knitting. So I ended up doing this really cool cast on for this hat. So here you go. I'm going to show it to you here and I'll show you more because I did a couple of other samples. Um, what can I say about this? Well, you know what? The hat feels great. The, the actual feeling of the fabric is amazing. It's perfect for here in Canada because we have lots of snow. So I know that somebody is going to be out there shoveling snow and they're going to be super warm wearing this hat. 
The other thing that I learned was that when you're double knitting, and I think I learned this actually from Lucy's class, is that the versus Fair Isle, for example, or stranded knitting, when you're double knitting, the stretch in your fabric is still stretchy. Whereas Fair Isle or stranded knitting, you risk having it become a little bit stiff or less flexible, less stretchy. So this led me to, so I finished the hat. I love um, Alistair's way of finishing up the top of the hat. So I'm going to close in on that so you can see that. And you can also see all of my huge mistakes. I was so lost in the pattern. I was not able to follow this chart. I don't know why. And it, it bothered me. I did put in lifelines. I had to use the lifeline at least twice, which is exactly where I stopped on this piece. I think this is row 15. I'm not sure. But row 15, I had a lifeline and I went down to it twice. So here's the inside. Let me just show you the inside on how the hat sort of comes together, which I think was really neatly done. Yeah, really, really nice. Okay, so the chart, following the chart, I said, I can't understand why I can't read this chart. I mean, I was able to do uh, the Duvino shawl and uh, the other little swatches where we're doing double knitting. What is so special about this? Well, there is some special stuff. We're doing cables. We're doing cabling and double knitting in this hat. Uh, what are we doing? We are, is there anything else? Well, we're doing a lot of stuff. Anything you can think of that you would never try in double knitting is happening in this hat. So I'd like to do a little promo for the Craftsy class teachers. What I think is happening with these classes is that Craftsy is getting the specialist in whatever category, like in this case, we have Lucy Needby on double knitting and Alistair Post Quinn. And they have been living and breathing double knitting for all these years and they have come up with appropriate projects that are useful that when you make them up you you will love them uh, that showcase all of the techniques to reinforce the learning of them so having done this hat first of all i have a hat it's not perfect uh, but i know that the next time i'm going to go into double knitting i'm just going to be just a bit better and I might even remember what I did um, for for this hat and learn from my mistake. Uh, you'll notice, actually I should point this out, from Lucy's class I applied Lucy's suggestion of using a pearl which is a twisted pearl because it is the shortest length of yarn used on for for double knitting so on this side of the hat for example you'll see all of the stitches are conventional stitches and if i turn it inside out you're going to notice that the stitches have sort of a dimensional quality this is because this is the pearl side and i was doing i think lucy calls it an unconventional pearl which is basically uh, purling into a twisted pearl. You're twisting your pearl stitch. So it gives it another dimension. But then, remember, let's, let's flash back to Gwen Bortner on Entrelac. As long as you're consistent, it'll look good. And it does. So I don't have a pattern. So I, is that consistent? None of these things match? Does that make it? I don't know. I love the hat. And my next one should be better. Anyway, all that to say is I went back to the chart and I said, okay, I'm going to try to do the chart. Okay, here is the chart. And every row that I go back will be just a straight pearl across. Because in the chart by Alistair, I think every row you were doing something. There were maybe out of the 30 some odd charted rows, maybe four rows where you were actually just going 
uh, purling across or knitting across or something like a relaxed row. So what I did was I tried to follow the chart by doing whatever the moves were. And then I would purl across the back, hoping that I would end up with the motif that was charted. This looks a bit better, but it's nowhere near what the chart or what I see the students posting on the Craftsy platform. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but what I do like is you can see the way the yarn is um, moving across the fabric because of the cables and the increases and decreases that we do in the double knitting. And I really like that. So um, I thought that was a really good sort of swatch to learn how to do advanced double knitting. So I don't know. I'm going to have to take a rest from this double knitting, maybe go back and ask Alistair what I did wrong. But out of all of this, and thank you to the hat, I have something I'd like to share with you. So here on the bottom, again, remember I mentioned I came up with this really cool sort of cast on edge. So cool, just by accident. And it's all based on Judy Becker's magic cast on that I do for double knitting. I think this is really, really nice. And the other thing that it made me think of, this double knitting would be great for corrugated ribbing. So I did a little swatch where I tried to figure out how to do this. Okay, buckle up. This is not going to be pretty, but I'm going to show it to you because I really think that this is worthwhile. So I'm going to start on the bottom where, where we can all sort of breathe easy looking at this. So you see here on the bottom again, this very cool sort of cast on. I hope the camera is getting this for you. And you'll see on the back where I began by doing the traditional stranded knitting here. And then I tried to figure out how to do a corrugated sort of ribbing with just the blue and the white. But this could be all the different colors that you would use in Fair Isle. So let me see which part of this actually did resolve correctly. Uh, okay, here it is. Look. So finally, in, I would say in this section here, you're going to see on the front, uh, you've got the pearls in blue, and then you've got the knitted fabric in white, pearls and knitted. Now I'm going to flip it. Don't blink. Here we go. So you see on the back, you've got the reverse of the pearls in the front. So you have the knitted, the pearls in blue, the knitted, the pearls in blue. Here's the front, here's the back. So why am I so excited? Well, first of all, you get all that stretch. And let's say you're doing a corrugated ribbon, ribbing for your cuffs, and you want to flip them up. They look nice on both sides. You won't be seeing the stranded knitting behind the corrugated rib. So that's why I'm all all excited. So thank you, Alistair. You were the inspiration for my new corrugated ferrile ribbing. But I do want to go back to the hat one day. I don't know when. Ah, oh, painful, painful. And Alistair's class actually has uh, some more projects that are even more extreme. So the next once, once I've rested up from this experience with double knitting the Ateria hat, he has knitting with double knitting with three colors. So that's what's coming up in a future episode. I don't know if it's going to be the next one. I think I might need to take a break. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So that was my experience in double knitting. So let's move on to Myra Woods class, Crazy Lace Cardigan. Last I left off, I had showed you my swatches from the batch of wool that my mom gave me. Well, my quilting ladies, uh, my quilting guilds, 
they're now approaching me with yarn and magazines and knitting tips. I guess a lot of the quilters are also knitters. So Janet, and I hope she doesn't mind that I'm mentioning this on, on the podcast. She comes up to me and she says, Oh, um, I have some wool that I was given. Would you be interested? It is quite old. Now, who better to give vintage wool to? So I said, Janet, if nobody is using it, for sure, I'm going to be using it. And lo and behold, she shows up with 20 skeins of this gorgeous 100% wool prehistoric. Let's see here. It's called Emu Super Crepe. I believe it's from England. And she has given me 20 skeins. Now the camera is picking up a weird color, which is still gorgeous. Uh, the, re the real color I would say is a fuchsia. I think it's reading sort of an orangey red on the camera, but it is fuchsia. So I decided this would be a beautiful yarn to do Myra Woods crazy lace cardigan in. And so I started swatching using this wool and it's so much fun to knit with. It's just gorgeous. Mind you, I went on to Ravelry and found out this wool will felt in a heartbeat. So uh, if I'm knitting in July, I may as well be making like a baby sized cardigan. But never mind, I'm still moving ahead. Here's my swatch for the lace cardigan that I'll be doing in Myra Woods class. And you can see how, how nicely the stitches are showcased using this crepe wool. The other thing I did for this swatch was, I believe I knitted in eight bumps. I think somebody had mentioned that probably on another podcast as a tip to remind you what size needle you were using. Uh, another tip I think I heard was that they just tie eight knots into the thread wherever they change the needle. So, and of course, Myra's tip is to add the little tags, which I haven't done for this particular swatch because I just received this wool and changed my plan of attack. The, the plan for the Crazy Lace Cardigan by Myra Wood is still the same as last episode, which is I'm combining it with, ah, wait for it, wait for it, here it is. Amy Herzog's class on Craftsy, Knit to Flatter. So uh, I did finally get into the uh, slinky catsuit sort of fitting outfit. Didn't look good, but that's what we needed to take a photograph, which my hubby did, and we did all our measurements. My daughter wrote the numbers, and this is the worksheet that's provided by Craftsy. So I have all the details, I have the photos, so I am just about ready to begin to apply the knit to flatter approach to Myra Wood's Crazy Lace Cardigan. Wish me luck, we'll see how that goes. And um, well, we'll see how it goes. And that would be all I have to talk about today on the Craftsy classes. So I'd like to move into some of the other activities that I've been doing. It's the first time ever. My first knitting event happened last Saturday, and that was a VKN, Virtual Knit Night. And it was so much fun. Uh, it was from Tina Robbins, who is the host of Knitting Blooms, one of my my podcasts that I love to listen to and I've learned a lot from her podcasts and she has amazing tutorials just as an aside so check her out she hosts every second Saturday night a virtual knit night using the Google Plus setup and so basically what you do is you go to her Ravelry 
group and you look up virtual knit night and she has all the instructions you click on a link and bingo you're in the hollywood squares of knitting basically you see little windows open with all the different knitters that have joined from around the world and it was so much fun i learned so much i've already applied some of the tips in fact the uh, the fact that i did my measurement in the cat suit was as a result of the uh, the another participant um i'm gonna say pat hope she doesn't mind but she encouraged uh, she mentioned that she was taking knit to flatter and how much it had helped her so i was just gung-ho ready to go and i got my camera out and did everything so thanks to virtual knit night i'm uh, moving ahead i'm so excited I, it was just a blast and everybody has tips to give. In fact, there's another tip that I got. I think it was Tina herself had made a suggestion on how I can go back to my Fair Isle knitting vest that I want to change the ribbing. So she's given me some tips there and I'm going to be trying those out. So thank you so much, Tina, for hosting the virtual knit night. It was a lot of fun. So I encourage everybody to check it out. All right, so I promised you a little bit of quilting. So my quilt world had practically shut down to a stop because I had taken up with knitting. And Quilt Moxie is my name because I quilt. And I'm very surprised that I'm actually getting people watching the podcast because the podcast has the word quilt in it. And I know a lot of the quilters that are watching must be also knitters. They must have been shocked to find out that most of the time I'm talking about knitting. But I'm coming a little bit back to my quilting roots because finally, finally, I'm coming up for some um, a breath, a breath of air. I uh, have come up with a quilting ruler that I'm hoping to patent. And we are classroom testing. So I've got the two guilds that I belong to, I have a French guild and an English guild here in Quebec, and the participants are helping me sort of fine tune my quilting ruler. And I'm so happy to let you guys know that things are going swimmingly. In fact, the ruler is sort of a success. Part of the patent process is that when you look at the ruler, you cannot figure out how to use it. it. It should not be obvious. In other words, you cannot patent a ruler that's a square used to create a square because a square is obvious. This ruler, you look at it, you're not. And that's what I've, I've learned from my quilters. It's not obvious that the ruler does what it's supposed to, what it actually does. And um, I'm very thrilled because the ladies so far are giving me very positive feedback. In fact, I've come up with some improvements on the rulers, on the ruler as a result of their suggestions. So thank you for joining us here today on this very bumpy episode. I'd like to invite you next time when I continue with Myra Wood's class, Crazy Lace Cardigan, with my wonderful new vintage wool combined with the Knit to Flatter class by Amy Herzog on Craftsy. And maybe I'll add a little bit more quilting, let you know how that's going with our classroom testing. And who knows, maybe I'll do some painting now that Craftsy has some of the art classes available. I'd like to encourage you, if you have a moment, to venture into the review process of iTunes. I know it's not easy, but if you do have the guts, please leave a glowing review for one of your favorite crafting podcasts. It does help the podcasts move up in the iTunes rankings, which is very important. And uh, yeah, join us next time. Join Quilt Moxie, the Ravelry group, which uh, I'm surprised to see is attracting some amazing knitters. They're just amazing. And uh, bye for now. À la prochaine.